What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another semi final preview. We're going through the next semi final Nadal versus Federer. So, we've gone through the Djokovic versus Batista. Good. Go check that video out if you haven't already. And now we're going through Nadal versus Federer. Uh, episode 40, if you're counting, they played 39 times before. This will be the 40th time they've played. And uh, I don't think they've actually played in the semifinals of Wimbledon before. They have played in the final three times. Federer leads the Wimbledon head-to-head 2-1 -head at the moment. So let's go through their road to this stage. We'll start with Rafa Nadal. So the road to the semifinals. He won this tournament back in 2008 and also 2010 when he defeated Burdic. So he hasn't won this tournament for nine years. So a lot of people are probably thinking that Nadal probably won this in 2014 or 2015. He hasn't won it for almost 10 years, so they've got to keep that into account. Uh, as you can see, he won the first match pretty easily. He's only been in trouble once in this tournament, and that was against Nick Kyrgios, and I think maybe that was because of the um, the animosity between the players. It wasn't really anything to do with the skill level. I think it was just toward, uh, more towards the anger uh, it seems like Rafa has towards Nick Kyrgios at times. Uh, but Songa, he didn't come up to, uh, up to par. He was absolutely terrible in my opinion when we saw him play Nadal he did not come out to play at all uh, then he beat and then Nadal beat Sosa in the fourth round no surprise there Sosa is not really a grass court player and then to my surprise um, and to a lot of people's joy out there because I picked Query to beat Nadal uh, Nadal ended up beating Query really easily first set was tough though I mean that first set could have gone either way uh, Query come back from 5-4 uh, down if he got to the tie break maybe things would have been a little different but as soon as Nadal won that first set he was off, and that was it. Nadal dominated, and he was in beast mode ever since. In my opinion, Nadal's been playing at semi-final level since the second round. He's had to play his best tennis from round two onwards because he's played. He had a hell of a draw. It's crazy. He's lucky that Souza ended up getting through because uh, there were some crazy opponents he could have played in the fourth round and quarterfinals. Uh, luckily, he didn't have to play them. But um, I think in previous years. Nadal hasn't really kick-started his grass court season until the quarterfinal stage. But this time, maybe to his benefit, it's actually, uh, you know, he's had to play his best tennis at the second round. So that might be something we can look forward to in the Federer match. Let's go see what Federer is up to and what he's been doing in this tournament. His last win, he's obviously won this eight times before. His last time he won it was 2017. He defeated Marin Cilic in the final, uh, so only a couple of years ago. First round, lost the first set of the tournament, which was a massive shock for a lot of us. Uh, then he came back and won pretty easily after that against a young South African, uh, Lloyd Harris. Then he beat Clark in the second round straight sets. He beat Puy in the third round, but it wasn't very convincing. A lot of errors, wasn't playing very well, but he got through. Luckily, Puy was playing a little bit worse. Uh, then the Berrettini match wiped him off the court. Fastest ever fourth round men's match ever in a Grand Slam, uh, 74 minutes. Federer absolutely annihilated one of the best uh, best grass court players of the season. So that was pretty pretty dominant there from Federer. And then the quarterfinal against Nishikori. Nishikori won the first set. Played super aggressive. Uh, kind of played like Djokovic a bit. So that was interesting to see. But then after that, Nishikori forgot how to play. And Federer ended up winning the match. Could have easily gone five sets. Nishikori started to regain his form towards the end of the fourth. But it was too late because Federer broke and then won the match. We actually watched that on this channel. It was very interesting, and uh, it was really fun to watch, so make sure that you uh, do come along to the live shows. And now he plays against Nadal in the semifinals for the second Grand Slam in a row, which is so much fun for us. Let's go through their head-to-head -head because they've got a massive history. They've played 39 times before. This is number 40. Huge rivalry. One of the best in tennis. As you can see, last time they played, Roland Garros 2019, only, what, two months ago. Uh, Nadal won that one straight sets. No surprise, because... Nadal's the king of clay. Federer was hadn't played on clay for four years, so there was a pretty it was pretty obvious that that was going to happen. But then, interestingly enough, Federer actually won their five previous meetings before that Roland Garros meeting. They were all on hard court, but still, Federer had a five zero momentum in the last five matches until Nadal broke that. So is that going to be a factor? The fact that Nadal got the confidence back, he knows how he can beat Federer again. Maybe that might play a play a bit of a factor into this match and give Nadal a bit of extra confidence that he's beaten Federer in the last couple of months, even though it's on grass and not clay. Uh, as you can see, last time they played, which was at Roland Garros, Nadal won 6 out of 16 break points. So Federer can't give Nadal that opportunity. He can't give Nadal 16 break points uh, because Nadal is too good to not take at least 6 to 10 of those. So uh, if, if Federer is going to win this, he's going to have to make sure he doesn't give away break points, and Nadal is going to have to convert break points like he did at Roland Garros. Last time they played at the, on the clay at Roland Garros, Federer only won 
39% of second serve points. So Nadal was attacking the second serve, and he was winning a lot of points on the second serve. Federer is going to have to serve well um, if he is to beat Nadal, and Nadal is going to have to take the opportunity, like he did at Roland Garros, to beat uh, the second serve of Federer when he gets a chance. Uh, last round against uh, Query, Nadal hit 44 winners and 12 unforced errors. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. 12 unforced errors in three sets, and he hit 44 winners in three sets. That is craziness. Uh, great hitting from Nadal. Absolute beast mode from him. Uh, and then the last round, Federer hit 55 winners in four sets, but he hit 32 unforced errors, which is not a good sign uh, if you are uh, on the Federer bandwagon on this one. So got to make sure that Federer doesn't hit those 32 unforced errors. He's got to hit less than 20 if he's any chance. It's going to be tough, though, against Nadal. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm very reluctant to give a give a uh, prediction here because the last time I gave her a prediction on a Nadal match, um, everyone got very angry. So um, maybe to my uh, maybe I shouldn't have picked the upset against Nadal. But hey, we're, it's finished. We're done. We're on to the next one. So this is what I think is going to happen. I mean, can we just get a five set match? Do we? Ne we don't need to. You know, I don't care who wins. I just want a five set match. I want an epic match. I want a 2008 Wimbledon final between Nadal Federer replay in 2019. Is that a, is that too much to ask? I think that's what we all want, um, especially if you are a Federer and Nadal fan like I am. I'm a fan of both players. Uh, you can flip a coin as long as we get to the fifth set. Flip a coin. I don't care who wins after that. Uh, but my smart money, and it mainly depends on the last round. So like I said, Federer struggled against Nishikori, someone who he beats most of the time pretty convincingly. Uh, and Nadal beat a big serving player who I thought he'd struggle against. So, um, you know, a little bit of a shock from both sides on both of those matches. So p giving that into account, like I said, I hope it goes five sets. I don't really mind who play who wins because either way, the winner of this is probably going to play Djokovic, which again is going to be epic. So five sets, please be five sets. Uh, but my prediction for this one is going to be Rafa Nadal. He convinced me in the last quarterfinal that he is uh, ridiculously good at, uh, at this level, on this stage, at this tournament right now. So he hasn't won the tournament since 2010, like I said. So maybe he can do it this year, but he's going to have to beat Federer and then probably Djokovic in the final. Uh, but like I said, let's just get a five-set match. Who cares who wins? I know there's a lot of Nadal fans, a lot of Federer fans out there. You're going for your players. I get that. But for tennis' sake, let's just get a five-set match. Put it in the books. Epic match. Uh, last time they played on grass at Wimbledon 2008 in the final. That match was insane. One of the best matches in history. Uh, hopefully we get a replay of that. That would be so much fun to see. I mean, we are so lucky that we get to see these guys play against each other uh, in the last parts of their career as well. So uh, it's not going to happen too many more times. I don't think they're going to play each other. So, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But um, this could be one of the last times we've seen the Nadal-Federer matchup. So we've got to take advantage of it. And hopefully it goes five sets. Now, we are going to be watching this match as well as the Djokovic and Batista a good match in the semi-finals on Friday. So make sure you come along to those. They're going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we get two five-set matches. I mean, let's be honest, the, the, um, the Wimbledon tournament this year has not been, besides the upsets on day one and two, the tournament's been pretty boring. Like, it hasn't been very exciting. Uh, the best players in the world have gone through easily. Uh, there haven't been too many you know, mistakes. I mean, Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer have not really played four-set matches, let alone a five-set match yet. So hopefully we can start, as we get to the pointy end of the tournament, start getting these epic matches that we want. Make sure you come along to the live shows there on Friday. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the live shows.